Hey, my YouTube friends and family. Yesterday, I read some of the article from the Rogersville Review, and the article is a lot longer than what I thought it was, and there's more interesting things. So, for you guys that didn't visit the link, I know I've had issues with it and, you know, telling me I had to subscribe, yada, yada, yada. So, for you guys that, you know, are having issues or just haven't read it, I do want to read, hopefully, the remaining, what's left in the article, if it's not too long. If it is, I'll make a third video, but it's um, in regards to missing Summer Wells, missing from a Rogersville, Tennessee home, and it's where Candace Summer's mom is speaking with a, I'm assuming it's a local reporter there at the Rogersville Review. But where I ended it yesterday, it's um, once the can once Candace called the police and she was saying the boys went out with their or could go out with their walkie talkies, you know, or if they had their walkie talkies, could go out in the woods. But I ended it there, so I'm gonna pick it back up there. So Candace goes on to say um, that she says then i went all the way back in the holler as far as the truck can go and i didn't see nothing back in there either when i was coming back up out of the holler the cops were coming up in my driveway so i just followed them up in here i don't recall if don was here before the police got here or if he was here at the same time that they showed up and i remember don saying in an earlier interview that uh, or I'm pretty sure, I, I've just heard so much and so many contradictory things, but I think he said he was actually there before the police, but correct me if I am wrong on that. But Candace goes on to say, we searched everywhere we could possibly search. They were out here for three or four days straight, searching 5,000 square acres. They searched all the mountain terrain all the way through here. They busted into my shed down there, and they destroyed it. What really gets me is when they were searching for her, Summer, why didn't they make the neighbors let them go in their sheds and buildings and stuff? Why didn't they make them unlock it? Some people were like, no, you can't search my property. Why would you do that? There's a missing kid. Why would you not let them search? It just don't make no sense. Who grew, she grew frustrated at this, and honestly, I can't blame her because, you know, I don't know if it was maybe the Orin and Orson search. Of course, they're still missing those poor babies from California City, three and four year old Orin and Orson West, but I don't know if it was in that one of the interviews where the um, law enforcement came out and said that if a neighbor you know, said, no, you can't search here, then of course that would raise a red flag. So, you know, it kind of doesn't make sense why, if this happened, obviously it would raise a red flag to law enforcement if someone says, no, you can't search my property, you can't search my building. So, you know, how she even, how Candace even was able to get this information is beyond me. But let's continue. Candace says they looked in every vehicle I had, underneath every vehicle I had. They opened that tote right there, and all of it's got in it is a bunch of crafts and stuff. You couldn't even fit nobody in that if you wanted to. They opened that like seven times. They even went to went so small to look in my mom's sewer tank of her camper. And I know I've seen a lot of talk about searching that sewer tank on the camper. So Candace is saying that they did search that sewer tank of her mom, Candy's camper. Candace says that's holes like an inch in diameter. Candace gestured with her thumb and index finger when she said this. And Candace said, how did you get that four foot baby in that hole? So I guess she's just saying, how would you get you know, summer in that hole. Why check there? Because that it's too small to put a body in. Candace says she thought the police canines would have had better success if she had been notified 
and put the family's other eight dogs or yeah to put the if she were was told they were coming out she could have put them up and I do agree with that as well but Candace said they just had done some stupid underhand stuff <clears throat> excuse me when they brought the cadaver dogs up they didn't oh sorry I'm losing my place why didn't they warn me ahead of time to find a place for these dogs to go? They just brought them up. Oh, you got dogs? You guys already knew I had dogs. That didn't pan out because you've got these eight adult dogs wanting to smell all these new dogs you just brought up on my property. So that's going to mess up the cadaver dogs because it's not going to know which way to go. Summer's mom also she was she expressed frustration with the tbi she said tbi kept questioning me they asked me the same thing wanted me to run through my whole timeline of the day well duh i mean obviously that's what they're gonna do but she candace said they did that like four or five times i'm like you guys still don't get it if i was going to lie i would have to think about it it just comes out. I don't have to sit here and think about what I did. I know what I did. I just spit it out to you 20,000 times. A liar has to think up something. I passed my polygraph test and everybody is like, oh, you failed. No, I didn't fail. The first time I did it, they couldn't really do it with me because they threw me in the back of a squad car like I did something wrong and hauled me, hauled me up there. I was already distressed over Summer being missing, and then they did that to me. So that just made more fuel to the fire and made me more upset. So by the time I got there, I was crying and shaking and just could not do it. So they told me they'll give me a few days to calm down and get some sleep and to stay off my phone because that's the worst thing you can do is be on your phone. And so I did that. And then I passed. It's not like I failed anything. People are like, oh, she failed. And Candace says, no, I didn't. And then Candace says, the only people that had to do it were me, Donnie, and Mom. All three of us passed. They took the boys to a different place, someplace over by Greenville somewhere. A child advocate or something like that talked to the boys. And I have... um heard that that those children and that is normal procedure that a child be taken to someone that that has you know a degree just that can talk to children and they're not going to be interviewed the same way as adults nor by the same person so I, I definitely believe that but Candace said the boys pretty much told them exactly what I told them, and I didn't even talk to the boys. All the boys had to recall was Summer coming in the house and going downstairs because they got so hooked on watching YouTube. They watched Minecraft videos on YouTube. I'm like, don't you guys ever get bored with that? And then Candace goes on to say they took her TV. It's hooked up to her Wi-Fi like they're going to find something on my TV. It's like they're digging for nothing. They're grasping at straws and not really trying. Everything that they did to me was backwards. They didn't shut down none of the roads until the next day. I mean, anybody could have been in and out of here, gone by the time they got down here. It takes them a good 40 minutes to get from Rogersville out here. And she added in um, that they're adding that there had been any recent contact from law enforcement. So I guess or just saying that law enforcement hasn't kept her up to date on what's going on. And again, completely normal in cases like this. Candace says I haven't even spoke to them in like two weeks. You'd think they'd at least tell me, update me on something, but they don't even update me on nothing. I asked them to go check all these barns and sheds that have been out here for years that anybody could be in. I tried to get them to go check out this guy who was trying to camp out here and try to take over my neighbor's property. They were like, oh yeah, we checked him out. It's like they don't even really care if they find her or not. That's what it seems to me because we're poor. 
I guess. I guess if we had lots of money, they'd do better work, I guess. That's the way I look at it. And, you know, that that's sad. And, you know, I really hope that's not the case. I, I don't personally think it is. And, like I said, I really hope it's not. You know, a, a kid goes missing. It, it doesn't matter how much money someone has. But let's get back to it. Candace says, I don't know. For some reason, TBI don't believe that she was abducted. That's what don't make sense to me because she's not here. She don't just disappear. I mean, I've seen movies where people just start vanishing off Earth, but you know, them are fake, or them are so fake. But somebody had to have taken her. That's the only conclusion I can come to. She had to have either, either somebody snuck in the basement, or she walked out the back. She'll come out the basement and walk around the house to her swing. She's always did that. She's never wondered, ever, away from here. She's never went out of this yard at all. Neither the basement door or the lower half of the driveway loop is visible from the area between Candy's camper and the Wells' home, and the slope of the hill is too gray, and the house blocks the view. And that's what the reporter added in here. To compound matters, although there are eight dogs on the property, they don't bark much. Candace was asked if they were good watchdogs. Hell no, she replied. They're lazy. Anybody that came up here that could have took her could have fed the dogs down there, lower part of the yard. These dogs are so friendly and love everybody. They don't know strangers. And the reporter does say, indeed, contrary to expectations, the dogs greeted the reporter like a known friend and hardly barked during the hour plus on the property. So I was myself wondering about that. I was just conversing with someone in the comment section about those dogs and you would think, with that many adult dogs, they're going to bark. But right here, the reporter is saying, not Candace. I mean, Candace did say it as well. But you've got the reporter here saying that the they expected the dogs to bark. And the dogs greeted the reporter like a known friend and hardly barked during the hour plus while they were there on the property. So, there you go. I mean, that's coming from someone that absolutely has no reason to lie whatsoever. But nonetheless, Candace, um, it goes on to say, as the hours tick by and more and more days pass, Candace can only wonder. Candace says, everything goes through my mind. You go about the what ifs. What if you did this? What if you did that? There's just all kinds of crap that goes through your mind. I didn't even know close that we even lived to these freaking sex offender people. There's literally one that could walk to my house in eight minutes. I didn't even know they existed this close to my home. I don't believe anybody anymore. I've gotten to the point where I can't trust nobody because everybody I talk to either twist my words around or they do something they put out more lies, and it's making it worse and harder on TBI to even find her. So I think that um, Candace just goes on and says she, she doesn't even let the boys go outside now. And she says that I try to take them out of here so they can get their mind off of it. In the summer, that's all that I do with the kids because it's summertime. They're not at school, so... Here's a chance when they're not at school that they get to enjoy. When we go, I smile for the kids, but I'm not having fun. I'll get in the water with them, but that don't mean I'm having fun. So, you know, she does have to maintain. Yeah, I get that, you know. She can't always walk around depressed because she does have these other children to think about and their needs and their happiness. And I've seen so many comments on Facebook with photos of her and the boys out at some kind of a park. And they're, you know, just smiling, laughing. And 
people are actually, you know, saying, oh, well, why is she there? Why are they so happy? I get it. You know, like, I agree with Candace here. You know, you're in a situation like this. God forbid any of us ever get in a situation like this. But you have other kids, completely normal, in my opinion, to to take those other kids out, show them love, affection, attention, you know, just be with the kids you have, you know, because what is she supposed to do? I mean, I know that she could hang Miss Sunflyers, but again, she's got other kids she needs to to do with, so, but sorry, I kind of went on a little soapbox there, but Candace goes on to say, if you look at all the pictures, Summer was always smiling, well, she said she, but I'm going to say Summer, Summer was always smiling, they're always happy kids, I mean, they'll get into fights, because that's what brothers do, but other than that, they're always happy, no matter what they're doing, Wyatt tells me, Mom, I feel like I would have went downstairs, or if I would have went downstairs and played with Summer, when she asked, she'd still be here. And then Candace told him, you can't blame yourself, son, that nobody knows what the next day is going to hold. So very sad that even the little boy, Summer's brother, he's feeling guilt. He's feeling guilty that he didn't go down and play with Summer and now she's gone. You know, just so sad all the way around. But that's, that's, I think it, actually that is the end of the article. It just, she ends up with that and just how she interacts with her other kids. So let me know what you guys think about what I've just read to you. And again, this is from Rogersville Review, a local station but let me know what you guys think. And as always, thank you all for watching.